Little Jugno, is it true that keeping urine and bladder for a longer time than usual risks kidney health? Oh, this is really good. I haven't done a responding to comments video in quite a long time. With COVID-19 and my recent addiction to these gaming videos, I think it's time. Be -woo. Ethan Green, I haven't had remembered a dream for more than eight years now. Absolutely no recall or memory of any dream. Is this a problem or does not matter? Doesn't matter. Not everyone remembers their dreams. In fact, some people that even remember their dreams, it doesn't happen to them every night. It's like a natural variance amongst humans. Zachary Kornfeld, question, the seltzer water and normal water give you the same hydration? Yes, I think they give you the same amount of hydration. I do think that seltzer water is not great for those who are suffering with reflux, meaning like acid reflux, because it could cause you to burp. It can also cause the sphincter up here to not work well. The sphincter is actually what keeps the acid in the stomach. That's where you want the acid to be because it, when it starts coming up and refluxing back into the esophagus, it actually starts creating irritation. That's when you get the feeling of heartburn. Make sure that you're only drinking seltzer if you're not suffering with that type of heartburn and not too close to bedtime. Do you still consult a doctor when you're sick or you consult yourself? Armand, great question. I consult myself as well as the resources that I use for my patients. Like if a patient comes in with a rare condition that I'm not 100% sure how to treat, I do consult those same sources, whether they're websites, textbooks. However, sometimes I do go reach out for help. Question, so as long as I can remember, my ankle has been cracking and that's every time I moor it. <laughs> I think you mean you move it, but check this out. I don't know if you hear it. My ankles crack. In fact, when I walk up the steps, my friends judge me. They're like, dude, why do you sound like you're 95 years old? I'm like, yeah, play me in ball one-on-one -on -one and we'll see how many years old I am. Banks open on Tuesdays, folks. Why do I feel a little heartbeat on the places I hurt like the tip of my fingers. You mean like the, the, the pulsating feeling that you feel in your fingers, like when you hit them or jam them? The pulsating feeling is a lot of blood rushing to that area to clot, to bring healing factors, inflammatory uh, cells. It also gets warmer, it gets redder. Those are all signs of inflammation. It's how your body knows something's going on. Cuddle muffins. Does your heart stop when you sneeze? Sometimes when I sneeze multiple times, my chest starts to hurt. Well, first of all, your heart's not beating all the time. It beats, relaxes, beats, relaxes. So if you happen to sneeze at the time it relaxes, your heart's not beating. I don't know if that counts. The reason you're probably experiencing chest pain when you sneeze multiple times rapidly is because when you're trying to sneeze, your body's also trying to breathe and inhale your lung, like expand your lungs. And when you try and expand your chest, those muscles are being pulled out but at the same time you're sneezing. So it almost becomes like a pulled muscle in between your ribs. Imagine doing a curl and then all of a sudden something comes and stops you from doing it. It strains the muscle, it pulls it. I know that wasn't the greatest demonstration, but I tried. Hannah Bilal, my resting BPM has gone up to 160. I'm still young, but I don't think this is usual. Is there a problem and should I go to the doctor? Absolutely. You should go as soon as, like you can. The reason why I'm saying this is the resting heart rate should be 60 to 100 beats per minute. Anytime when you're at rest and it's going above 100, there needs to be a physiological reason why that's happening. Either A, you're consuming a substance that's raising your heart rate, caffeine, drugs, standing up and you're going to exercise heavily. That should, that can raise your, your heart rate. Stress, anxiety can raise it. But to 160, that's a very high heart rate. That signals to me that something abnormal is going on that desperately needs to be checked now. Julian Vlogs, is having interaction with your pet, such as being licked, hugged, kissed, uh, hugging them or kissing them is harmful. Okay, that was an aggressive, very slow motion kiss. It's probably not great advice for a doctor to say that your dog should lick you because there is bacteria in his mouth, probably not beneficial in the long, long term, and there is a potential risk, but like when I cuddle with him and he kisses me, oxytocin gets released and that's like a cuddle hormone. It makes you feel good. It lowers your stress hormone levels. So I love it, but medically I can't recommend this type of licking. How long can he go? I'm not instigating it. Are you done? John Paul Turingen. How can I remove white stretch marks on my shoulders? Stretch marks are really difficult, if not impossible to remove. Good way to think about them is almost like scar tissue. It's literally from your skin being overly stretched 
and scar tissue being laid down. There are a few, what we call like aesthetic or plastic surgery-esque procedures that can cut out these stretch marks, but those come with obvious risks and you need to weigh the pros and cons for you. The creams that are out there, maybe they can help with the, the softness or the suppleness of your skin, but it's not gonna make the stretch marks completely disappear. Surgical procedures, possibly some laser procedures, and then creams, that's the order of efficacy going from best to worst. How come when I wash my hands and then dry them, they're still wet and no need to say my name? Did you dry them well? Like, are you using a heavy moisturizer? Are you sweating? If you're sweating, are you nervous? What are you nervous about? Were you nervous I was gonna try and pronounce your name? Your hands shouldn't be wet after you dry them. Kara Andrews. Hi, Dr. Mike, love your content. My question is whenever you cough up any phlegm, is it better to spit it out or just swallow it or does it matter? It doesn't really matter. Me personally, like if it's large enough, I spit it out because it's uncomfortable. But if it's like a small amount, feel free to swallow it. You're, like your body's capable of disinfecting it because your gastric contents have such a low pH, meaning it's such an acidic environment, kills any bacteria that it would be problematic. A naturopath told me once that drinking while eating discourages the enzymes to work. What would you say to that, please? I love drinking while eating water. It kind of fills up my stomach and it prevents me from overeating. And it helps food travel down my esophagus. And imagine we could just make our digestive enzymes not work because we had some water. Oh my God, we would be the least effective organism on the planet. Humans have survived thousands of years, but if water goes into our system the same time we have a Big Mac, we can't get its nutrients. All right, I went a little heavy on that. Sorry, naturopath friends of mine. Little Ju Jugno, is it true that keeping urine and bladder for a longer time than usual risks kidney health? So let's start with explaining that the average human bladder holds 16 ounces of urine, which is two cupfuls two cupfuls of urine, literally. So these are eight ounces each. Letting your brain know when it's time to go is a really complex process. So if you continuously strain your bladder, you could actually cause yourself some serious problems. You may retain urine after you urinate. You don't have control over your urination. You could potentially have an increase in urinary tract infections. This isn't necessarily proven. Logically, it makes sense that if you're keeping that urine stagnant, that bacteria has a higher chance to multiply in that area. But look, if you're just holding it for a few minutes, hours, to, it's not a big deal. Know that your initial urge to go urinate usually happens when your bladder is about half full. That's a good time for you to go and urinate. But if you need to wait an hour or two, your body can handle it. Is Saturday truly for the boys? No, Saturday is for bear. He's a boy, you're right. It is for the boys. Nico. Why does my anxiety cause anxiety? Why am I more anxious in the evenings? Well, it's because anxiety is a vicious, vicious cycle. And in fact, one of the steps that we try and teach our patients to do is not to not have anxiety, because that's a very difficult thing, but it's to control the thoughts you have about anxiety. So if your thoughts are driving your anxiety to become worse, and we address those thoughts, we could potentially cut down your anxiety about your anxiety. It's what CBT is, cognitive behavioral therapy. Check it out, highly recommend it. Not just for those who suffer with anxiety, but everyone on the planet. I do CBT on myself quite often. My question, if someone wakes up in the middle of surgery, what do you do? I encourage them to go back to sleep with some medicine. Theophilos Mist, question, does sudden pain breaking your wrist increase the chances of passing out? Absolutely. Passing out from extreme anxiety, stress, pain, even seeing your own blood. All of this is a survival mechanism to not overwhelm you. You could absolutely pass out from sun pain. In fact, one of the hallmark signs of breaking a bone could be passing out and getting really nauseous at the same time. Well, not at the same time, because if you passed out, you're not nauseous, but those are two signals. Like I remember once I've only broken one bone in my body, my left wrist, I was snowboarding, I thought I was really cool and I wasn't on the bunny slope and I fell and right away I got so nauseous. It wasn't even painful, but that nausea, I knew. I knew there was something wrong. And when I came home, my dad told me, yup, you broke your scaphoid. Just a bone in the wrist, one of the most commonly broken bones in the human body. I like to sing sometimes. Me too, not very good at it. My question is, is it possible for someone who is partially disabled, I have POTS, to go into med school? I want to become a pathologist, and is it something that has played a huge part in my life? Anemia, 
and it has always been interesting to me. I think that you should absolutely follow your dreams. Just make sure that you're aware of what you can do and can't do so that you don't put yourself in a dangerous position or your patient in a dangerous position. So for example, if you know that you cannot stand for an extended period of time, don't do that just to please someone else. Explain what you're limited in and find alternatives or find programs who offer alternatives in order for you to participate in that education. No person should be withheld in education simply because they have a disability. Maria Hu, question for Dr. Mike. How does the lack of affection affect your health? You see what you did there, Maria? Social connections laid into your life play a huge role in the quality of your life and the length of your life. These have to be meaningful social connections and they have to be positive ones. Like, is it beneficial to your health to get married? Uh, it depends if you have a happy marriage. Happy marriage? Yes. Very sad, abusive marriage? No. If you're getting positive affection from your dog, from your partner, absolutely that's good for your health. It lowers your stress hormone. You get a release of oxytocin, which is that cuddling hormone, makes you feel good about yourself, motivates you, lowers your blood pressure. In fact, affection encourages you to do things like go outside for a walk, experience new things, and all of those things are good for the human mind and body, mind body. Do you know the truth about cracking your knuckles or the truth about swallowing your gum? Maybe what they told you isn't true. Click on one of these and find out. Oh yeah, and stay happy and healthy.